Hello there! In this next video we'll be drawing this top-down house from beginning to end, step by step and in real time using Inkscape. I will be explaining everything slowly and clearly, as well as showing some interesting tools and techniques. So if you're a beginner to Inkscape illustration, I recommend you to follow along. This will be a great tutorial to review the basics and maybe learn something new. But if you have no idea of what Inkscape or vector illustration is, and you think the tutorial seems interesting, I'll let you know that I have a complete course on the channel, as well as a ton of other tutorials like this one that you may find interesting. I'll leave you a link in the description. We'll be taking some heavy inspiration from a couple of sources, of course, old school pixel art, but believe it or not, there are quite a few artists who have thought to adapt this style to vector form already, so we are learning from them as well. But before starting out, I make videos every week and I do plan to continue making these sort of tutorials, so if you're interested in Inkscape, like and subscribe to the channel and maybe let me know what you'd like I cover next in the comments. Ok, let's begin. The first thing I want to do is to add a quick grid. We are not gonna snap to it at all. This is a less precise type of illustration. It is there so you can follow along more easily. Go to File. Document Properties. Now go to the Grids tab. Make sure the drop down is set to Rectangular Grid and hit New. And the settings are fine here, but I do feel the size is a bit too small. To change that, go to Spacing X and Y and set both to 20. Great, now we are ready to start. And we are gonna start with the front wall. So grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle of about 3 by 2 big squares. I'm pretty sure the separation between big squares and small ones is still noticeable with YouTube's compression. I completely forgot to make it darker in the options, I apologize if it's difficult to see. In case you don't see it, every 5 small squares there is one big square that's slightly darker. That's what I mean when I say big squares or small squares. Anyway, this wall is supposed to be wood, so let's change its color. Open the Fill and Stroke dialog by going to Object, Fill and Stroke. From now on, just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to give you the exact colors I'm using by zooming in into the numbers in the HSL section. Just copy them if you want to be exact or come up with your own if you feel like it. Now let's make a wooden beam at the side. Grab the rectangle tool again and make a rectangle that's taller than the wall and slightly larger than one small square width. Give it this color. Now, a really nice effect I've seen in the references was a bit of highlight in the rim. So let's do that. With the object selected, hit Ctrl D. This will duplicate the object right on top of the original. So the object that's selected now is not the original, it's the duplicate we just made. Let's give it the color of the highlight, which is this. And with the black arrows, scale it so it's a thin rim highlight. Just so it's easier to handle, select the two shapes with the object tool and hit Ctrl G to group it. Now you can handle it as if it was a single shape. We want to put this beam right at the corner of the wall, and we could just move it there by eye, but just to explore a bit more some of the features of the program, Let's be super accurate and use the Align and Distribute dialog. Go to Object, Align and Distribute. This dialog will allow you to do just that, align and distribute objects perfectly. To use it is very simple. First, by default, this dropdown that says Relative to should be set to Last Selected. If it's not, change it. Now the alignment will happen in relationship to the last selected object. So select the beam group and then shift select the wall shape. Because the wall shape was selected last, the beam will be the one that's going to be adjusted. The options here are super simple to understand. Just leave the mouse a little bit over the buttons and they should tell you exactly what they do. Anyway, the button we want is this one that says align left edges to right edges. Now let's duplicate this beam to the other side, Ctrl D. To duplicate the beam, shift select the wall and hit this button 
that will align the right edge to the left edge. Let's make it a roof. Grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle of 4 by 3. In the references I nice little detail was the balance between geometrical shapes and the rounded corners and I want something like that. So round off the corners with the rectangle tool's little white circle. This is supposed to be some material like straw, so give it this color. Now duplicate it with Ctrl D and with the object tool drag it up a bit while holding the Ctrl key so the movement is constrained vertically. It's really hard to see because it is the same color, but move it about two small squares up and give it this color. Group the shapes so they are easier to handle. Once again, we are going to place this object using the Align and Distribute, so select it and then Shift select the wall. Hit this button to align bottom to top and then hit this button to align centers, so the roof is perfectly centered to the wall. If you want, you can make some adjustments. Here I thought the thickness of the roof was a bit too much, so I decided to change it. Remember that you can enter a group by double clicking, or you can select an object inside a group with the node tool. The node tool will bypass the group, allowing you to select a shape inside without having to enter it. Anyway, I moved the top just a bit down and I think that now works better. Continuing with the roof, I feel something is missing. Maybe a top plane to make this kind of inclined roof. I have no idea how they are called. Grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle of 3 by 2. And round off the corners to fit with the rest of the roof shapes. Give it this color. Finally, I feel the roof is a bit too big, so I will make some adjustments with the object tool. These are optionals, I just wanted to fix something that was bothering me personally. I think a couple of beams that will hold up the roof will look nice here, so grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle of two small squares tall by four big squares and three small squares wide. Make sure the corners are a bit rounded off. Now switch to the dropper tool using the shortcut D and sample the color from the other beam. To make the top, duplicate this shape with Ctrl D with the dropper tool sample from the highlight. Move it up about one small square. Don't forget to hold Ctrl to constrain its movement vertically. Now we need to move this shape below the other in the stack order. To do this, I'm going to be using the shortcuts that show on the screen but you can also use these buttons here in the tool controls of the object tool. Group the two shapes with Ctrl G. And now to put it into position, we could use the align and distribute option to align centers so it's placed perfectly. In the align and distribute dialog, hit this button. Move it to be below the roof shapes using the shortcuts we just saw. I want it to show a bit of the frontal planes below the roof, so holding shift so it's constrained vertically, move it about one small square down. We need another beam so the roof won't fall over, duplicate it with Ctrl D and holding Ctrl move it up and close to the back. Of course send it below the roof. And now we have the base of the house, next we are gonna build on this. I want to add some detail in the front wall. This is supposed to be a wooden shack or cabin, so I think some indication of wooden planks would look good. Grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle of about two small squares tall. Give it this color. Now duplicate it and move it up holding control three times like in here. Don't worry about separating them perfectly, we're gonna fix that right now. With all the shapes selected, go to the Align and Distribute dialog and hit this button that says Distribute vertically with even gaps. If you need to fix the width, select them all and use the black arrows to scale them so they overlap with the other beams. 
Now send them below the beam, but above the wall, one by one. Or if you want, you can just group everything and move the entire object below in one go. I don't want to move into smaller details right now, but here I couldn't resist to add a quick shadow to see how it looked. With the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle just above the roof and give it a full black and a lower alpha value to about 20 to make it transparent. Then move it below the roof and beams, but above the front wall and the planks. And I think the whole thing is looking pretty nice already. The front wall has to have some door and some windows, of course, so let's do that now. Make a rectangle of 4x4 four four small squares. Sample the highlight of the beam. And round the corners a bit with the control. Duplicate the shape and sample the color of the beam. Holding control to constrain it vertically, move it a bit down, about half a small square. Duplicate this shape, move it down another half a square, and send it below everything. This shape is going to be another shadow, and this poses a bit of a problem. We can sample the color of a shape using the dropper, but not the alpha, and we want all the shadows to have exactly the same alpha. It's a bit of a pain to go in and set the exact number for the color and alpha for every single shadow. Luckily, there is a nice little feature the program has that will help us speed up setting the right values. Select the shadow that we made before and copy it with Ctrl C. Now select the shadow from the window and hit Ctrl Shift B. This will apply the exact same fill and stroke value of the copied shape, so the shadow value will be identical. This feature, of course, works with any other fill and stroke value, but it is more useful with shadows because you can sample the alpha with the dropper. Continuing with the window, draw a rectangle inside, leaving an even space from the sides and top, but maybe leave a bit of an extra space from the bottom. Give it this color. Duplicate the shape and sample the color from the highlight. Move it behind this yellow shape, but above the other ones. Then, using the arrows, drag it a bit down so it shows a plane. Group everything and go to the Align and Distribute panel. We want it to be centered in the window area, so shift select the rectangle and hit this button to align the vertical centers and this one to align the horizontal centers. Now the shape is perfectly centered. Now let's continue. Grab the rectangle tool again and make this thin rectangle close to the center. Sample the color from the window. Now shift select the window and align it vertically. Hit Ctrl D to duplicate the shape. Click on top of the shape again to get the rotation controls and holding Ctrl to move in fixed increments. Rotate it so it's laying horizontally. Because we moved in fixed 15 degree intervals, we know this shape is perfectly horizontal and it's also perfectly centered, since the original vertical shape was centered as well. Now duplicate this shape and sample a highlight color. Scale it so it makes a thin plane. Finally, move the vertical shape to be above everything. Now group all shapes together and we got a window. Now for the main door. Make a rectangle of one big square wide by one big square and three small ones. Maybe slightly smaller than that. Round the corners a bit, about as much as the windows. Sample the color of the highlight. Duplicate the shape and sample the color from the wood. Move it about one square down, holding control. Now, just like before, with the rectangle tool, drag a rectangle inside of this shape. Don't worry about the bottom, it will be covered soon. 
give it this color and just like before center it vertically and horizontally using the align and distribute dialog grab the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse of about one small square give it this white I want to make a step here in the entrance so draw a rectangle of the width of the door and about one and a half square height. If you want you can center the shape to the door, but here it came out pretty exact so I won't do that. Sample from the highlight. Ok, but now I want to add some roundness in the corners, but only in the two at the bottom, not the ones at the top. The easiest way to do that is to use a path effect. Path effects are special operations that can be applied to paths. They are really powerful, and what's even better, they are non-destructive, which means that you can disable them at any time, and you still get the original shape. To be able to add path effects, you need to open the path effect dialog, so go to path, path effects. To add a path effect, go to this arrow here. You'll see a list of all the path effects you can apply. The one we need is this one that says corners. The path effect is now applied, and you should see here in the dialog the properties that we can change at any moment. If it's not clear, the corners path effect will allow you to round off the corners, similar to the controls of the rectangle tool. But the difference is that here you can change the roundness of each corner individually. The radius option should allow you to set the same roundness to all corners, which would be a great place to start if it worked but for some reason it just didn't for me. Some corners ended up with completely different roundness. Anyway, if you switch to the node tool, you should see these small white arrows. By pulling from this you can control the roundness of a corner. If you drag them completely towards the corner, then the corner will have no roundness whatsoever. Use them to make the top corners have no roundness, and the bottom two to have approximately the same quantity of roundness. We are done with the shape. Here I decided to change the method I was gonna follow, so with the shape selected, sample from the wood to change the color. Then duplicate it with Ctrl D, sample from the highlight, and scale it up to show a bit of the front of the step. If you want, you can adjust the exact location now. For some final detail, I think a shadow will look really good here, so draw a rectangle that fits the area of the door. Copy any shadow shape and then apply it using Ctrl Shift B as I showed you before. You can make the shadow fit the area of the door by adjusting with the align and distribute dialog, but you can also eyeball it, it's far away enough that nobody will notice if you're careful with it. But here I thought another shadow at the side would frame the whole thing better, so duplicate the main shape and rotate it holding control like, like before. And place it at the side. You'll notice that these shadows overlap a bit, that's distracting. So an easy solution is to merge them into a single shape using a boolean union. Just select the two shapes and hit Ctrl and plus. And one final contact shadow here at the bottom of the step, just duplicate one of the shapes. Move it a bit down, give it the color of the shadow using Ctrl Shift B, and send it below everything. And we are done with the door and the window, now let's put everything into place. We want two windows, so duplicate the group and move it to the other side. Don't worry about separating them evenly. We're gonna use the align and distribute dialog for that. If you put them on top of the building, you'll see that they are a bit too big. We're gonna have to scale them down. Select the three shapes. We want to scale them all at the same time to maintain the relative sizes. Just eyeball the right size. You want all the shapes to fit inside the wall with a clear separation in between. 
If you want, you can scale the door or windows individually. Also, the door step should leave the silhouette of the wall. When you are done, to spread the three objects equally, select all three groups and go to the Align and Distribute dialog and hit the Distribute Vertically button. If you need it, you can align the window's top to the door's top using the Align Top with Top button. We're almost done with the building, only a couple of things more. The roof area feels a bit empty, let's make a chimney. Grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle of 4x4. Four four. Make sure the corners are a bit rounded. Give it this color. Duplicate the rectangle and give it this color. Now scale it up so it shows a bit of the frontal plane. Draw another rectangle on top. Again, don't bother about putting it exactly in the center. We're going to use the Align and Distribute dialog, like before. Align vertically and then horizontally. Now to make the bottom part. Let's make another rectangle of about three small squares. Sample the color of the highlight and send it below. I want a drop shadow below the upper part. The easiest way to do this is to duplicate the bottom part, scale it up using the bottom arrow, send it below the upper part, and copy a shadow and paste the style using Ctrl Shift B. For a final detail, in the references, a thing I loved was the smoke coming out of the chimney. To do that is super easy, just grab the ellipse tool and make a few perfect circles on top. Remember that you can make a perfect circle by holding control while you draw with the ellipse tool. Give it a 90% white, which is this color here on the palette. Try to variate the sizes and don't make too many of them. When you're done, group everything and move it to the top of the roof. And now we are really done with the house. Now it's time to give it the details. Let's start with a contact shadow for the house. You can duplicate the roof or make a brand new rectangle. Just put it below everything. and paste the style of the shadow. Another great detail that I saw in the references was a bit of a pattern along the roof to imply some kind of texture, maybe straw. To do this, we are gonna use a path effect. But before that, I want to warn you that I had a lot of crashes when making this next part. I must have lost the progress like 10 times. The truth is that Inkshape is a buggy program, especially if you work on Windows, and path effects seems to be the area where the program is the most likely to crash. Anyway, we are going to use a path effect which will repeat another path along its border. Because we want a nice bumpy silhouette, grab the ellipse tool and make a small perfect circle, smaller than a single small square. This path effect seems to not work if you use a built-in shape, so we need to transform it to a pure path. Select the circle and go to Path, Object to Path. You'll know if it's a full path if you see the nodes instead of the controls when you switch to the node tool. Continuing, select one of the roof shapes and go to the Path Effect dialog and add a Pattern Along Path effect. The way this path effect works 
is by repeating a path, in this case our circle, along the border. And to define the path that will be used, you need to first copy the circle with Ctrl C. I already did this. Now hit this button to paste the path. If everything went right, you should see the roof gets kinda weird looking. This is because the wrong settings are active. Hit on this drop down, select the option that says repeated stretched. And now the circle is repeated along the border. Now here comes the part when the program gets buggy. I tried to fill the area manually, and I couldn't do that without the program crashing on me. So instead, I searched for an option that kinda gives me a similar result. Here on this property that says Fuse Nearby Ends, set it to a large number like 10 or so, and it should fill the entire shape. This isn't ideal because if you look closely at the corners where the ends fuse, you can see some ugly areas, but it's the one way I managed to get a feel without the program crashing on me, so we'll have to deal with it for now. Luckily, it's a rather small detail, so most people won't even notice it. Anyway, repeat the same steps with the other three roof shapes, add the pattern along path effect, paste the circle shape, set the drop down option to repeat stretched, and set fuse nearby ends to about 10 or so. I also want this bumpy area to be noticeable in the connection of the chimney with the roof, so draw a small rectangle at the bottom. Repeat the same steps for the effect and don't forget to sample the color from the roof. We are done with the main house. Now I want to make some bushes that will help with the composition. This is gonna be super simple. Grab the ellipse tool and make an ellipse of 3 by 2. Give it this color. Duplicate the shape. Send it below. Make it a bit bigger and move it a bit forward, like I'm doing here, to imply some perspective. And then give it this color. Repeat the same steps once again. Duplicate the shape, send it below, and make it slightly bigger and move it a bit forward. And give it this color. I want to apply the same path effect than in the roof, but this time, Maybe the bumps should be a bit smaller, so use a slightly smaller ellipse. You know what to do now? Add the pattern along path effect, paste the smaller circle, set it to repeat stretched, and fill it with fuse nearby ends. Do this for the other two shapes as well. As a final detail, add a couple of fruits by using the ellipse tool. Not too much, three or four spread evenly across. And I almost forgot a drop shadow. Just make an ellipse slightly bigger than the bush, send it below, and paste the shadow values by using Ctrl Shift B as we did before. Finally, group everything together. When you're done, put it in the corner of the house, and duplicate it to the other side. The other bush looks like a clone, I would recommend you to go inside the group by double-clicking, and just change the location of the fruits just so they are slightly different. And now, for the absolute final detail in this illustration, I want to make a bit of a jaded terrain at the entrance. I thought it looked really good in the references, so let's do that now. Grab the pen tool, and using the small squares as a guide, draw this geometrical shape. You don't need to be super accurate here, you certainly don't want to enable snapping, this shape is gonna look great once we give it the path effect. Disable the stroke and give it this color. And send it below everything. 
Now let's give it the corners path effect. Once again I tried to see if giving all corners the same value would work, that's the cleanest way to do this. Sadly it didn't, I really don't know why, it used to work for me. Anyway, just go in with the node tool and try to make all the corners have more or less the same amount of roundness. And we're done. Well, not really. You're never really done with an illustration, because as soon as you finish you'll notice a million mistakes and things you don't like, and here I started to fix and move some things around, not any big changes, just moving things around and slightly adjusting some proportions and sizes. These were the things that personally bothered me, but that may not bother you. So at this stage it's up to you to see how much you want to spend refining things. However, the one thing I did add was a quick shadow here at the left side, so let's quickly do that. Just grab the rectangle tool and make a quick shape. Don't even bother giving it color or adjusting its position too much. We're gonna merge it with the other shadow. So shift select it and perform a boolean union operation by hitting Ctrl and plus. This will join the two shapes as a single one, changing the shadow color and the stack order of the rectangle. Ok, now we are really done with the drawing. This house was a nice exercise for the basics of illustration in Inkscape, as well as some more specific tools like the path effects we saw. The idea is getting comfortable with the tools so you don't even think about them and focus only on what you have in mind. So if I may, I would like to recommend you an exercise to do. Go to Pinterest or your favorite image search engine and search for the artists I named in the references. And using what you've learned here, try to copy as accurately as you can any of their work. Do this every day and you'll become more and more intimate with the program's tool and the way they work. Anyway, that's it for now. Subscribe if you haven't. I do plan to keep making this type of real-time step-by-step tutorials. Also, don't forget to give it a like if you did and let me know what you think and maybe what things you'd like I do next. That was all for now. See you next video.